I'm Rick, most of you guys know me, some of you uh, <laughs> Welcome to week two of the sex series. Huh? Everyone having fun with that? Who was here last week? And came back for week two, that's good. Pastor Patrick raised his hand, of course you were here last week. You were talking. He gave like the best sermon I've ever heard him speak last week. Um, but then, what do you do? Then we get into small groups and all the all the guys are like, that was so awkward. Like I feel so awkward right now. But I wanted to start this week by saying, um, I want you guys to think about it differently, right? Like like sex is kind of awkward, right? And especially hearing it at church. But the thing is, whether or not we talk about it, everyone else is talking about it, right? That's what he said last week. Uh, the music you listen to, the movies you watch, the people on the bus are talking about it. So, did I, sorry, I think I muted it. So, we need to join that conversation, right? Because we have the answer. We have the solution. We have the thing that everyone else is floundering about for, that is looking for. And if we don't join that conversation with them, like, how are they going to know? They're going to talk about it, whether or not we're part of it. So I want to think about it differently this week. Um, that's not really part of the message. I just wanted to say that. Uh, so this week we're going to talk about the word obsession. Uh, does anyone say, like, I'm obsessed with whatever? Like, I'm so obsessed with that new Netflix show. Or, like, I'm so obsessed with frozen yogurt or something like that. Concrete. Um, but really, you know, they don't actually mean that they're obsessed with it, right? It's just like a saying, like if you went to their house, there wouldn't be like posters of frozen yogurt on the wall or like maps of all the places where they could get frozen yogurt. Um, but the, you know, the idea is the same. We have something, a passion that we're really interested in and we uh, maybe get, take it a little too far, it takes a little bit of control over us. Um, I know that being the one of the middle school boys, small group leaders, uh, video games is like a big thing we talk about like all the time. There's a lot of gamers here And I know when I was in high school, I used to have these binge video game weekends Usually it would start with my cousin would come over and we would go to a video store like Blockbuster or Hollywood video Which like I'm super sad that you guys Aren't gonna know what it's like to go to a video store and rent a video game. That was so fun. Such a big part of my life I don't Gamefly. Preach. Gamefly, whatever. That's not the same. So, like, we would go to the video game store, pick out a game, go home Friday night, and just, like, play all night. Wake up Saturday, play all day, eat dinner, play all night. Wake up Sunday, probably go to church. But we would play a little bit before or after. And sometimes my cousin, like, wouldn't even go to sleep. Like, I would wake up, and he'd be playing. And I'd be like, did, did you wake up early or something? He'd be like, no, I just didn't sleep all night. Like all like, all weekend video games, and then so how many people have done that with like Netflix or video games or something? By Sunday you feel terrible, right? Like you open the front door and the sunlight comes and you're just like, oh, it hurts, and like uh, like you feel bad. And that's kind of how you know an obsession has gotten out of control is if it makes you feel bad, or if it's hard to stop. That's a couple things you can learn. So what this morning is about is. Um, it's, it's about just uh, when passions have become obsessions, and this applies to sexual sins, but also like all kinds of sins and bad things in your life. So let's uh, look at the Bible verse up on the screen. This is from 1 Corinthians 6.12. You say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. Um, this was Paul writing to the Corinthians, and they actually had some pretty serious sexual sins going on within their congregation. And I guess this is, these are in quotes here, that's the saying, I'm allowed to do anything, or the Bible I grew up reading said, everything is permissible for me. Um, just like a saying. And there's truth to that, right? Like we, uh, Christ died, freed us from the following the law perfectly to earn our salvation. And in a sense, there is freedom. I am allowed to do everything. but can't neglect the second part, but not everything is good for you, and I must not become a slave to anything, or um, I will be mastered by nothing, is, is again what my Bible said. So, um, the ironic thing about it is that we look at this first part, I'm allowed to do anything, everything is permissible for me, 
uh, as an exercise of freedom, but what does it lead to? Slavery. You, the thing that you think will free you is actually mastering you, is actually putting you in bondage. So I'm going to give a, a couple super practical tips for when you feel like something might be getting the better of you in life. Um, and then we're going to go a little bit deeper with that after that. So um, the tips are, next slide, recognize your obsession. Um, and this is a bit of what he talked about last week too, is just pay attention to what is feeding into your life, what's going on in your life. Bring God into that, ask him what, is there anything that's out of control? Start thinking about your habits. Um, and then the second one, set healthy boundaries, and there's two little sub points for that. So an example of this, uh, I'll let you in on a little struggle in my life. Uh, after lunch every day, I want chocolate, like a cookie or a piece of candy or something. Like I, I crave it. Um, to the point where I call it a palate cleanser because that makes it sound cooler, right? Like it's not a, it's not controlling me. To the point where if I don't have a piece of chocolate, like my stomach kind of feels a little unsettled. Um, and this Preach. has been, this, I guess I'm not the one. This has been a struggle for years and years and years. And there's a couple things that I've done to help me get out of it. Uh, wean myself off and get out. Um, so wean yourself off. You guys probably know what that means, right? If I eat chocolate every day after lunch. Take a day off. Don't deny yourself all the way. Eat one, take a day off. Eat one, take a day off. Take two days off. Eat one, take three days off. And then eventually it doesn't master you anymore. Again, super practical, but that like really helped me, honestly. And it applies to all kinds of things in life. And then get out. This is a recent one because it still is a struggle in my life. I, I'm a stay-at-home dad, so I'm home all the time. So we eat lunch, the girls are playing, and then I walk in the kitchen and there's the like, Halloween candy bucket of chocolate just looking at me, like literally looking at me, it's like a jack-o'-lantern. And then there's like the cookies over here. And if I, as long as I'm in and out of the kitchen, which I am a lot, every time it's like, oh man, I get at that. Oh man, my stomach, I feel like I ate some garlic for lunch. Like I, I literally eat garlic, you know, like garlic was in my food for lunch. I need this chocolate so I don't smell bad. But um, I found recently that if I get out of the house, I totally forget about it. And it's kind of a funny thing, just, I don't know, just getting out of the situation helps you forget about it. And that applies to uh, anything that may have mastery of you, but let's bring it back to the sex thing. Like if you are habitually looking at dirty pictures, porn, whatever, um, every night, and you look at that computer, that's going to tempt you, right? Like throw that computer out the door. Maybe don't throw it, just like get it over there. Or even like just leave the house. Um, if you can't leave, you know, if your home is late and you're thinking of these things, uh, another thing that uh, is bring a friend in, like call, call call your buddy, like, hey, I'm thinking about doing something I'm not supposed to do, can we just talk about it until I can get my mind off of it. Um, so anyway, those are a couple super practical tips, but I, I really want to go deeper with this and get to the heart of it. So let's go uh, later on in that chapter in 1 Corinthians 6. Uh, verses 18 to 20. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Next slide. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Um... Did you catch that? You, you do not belong to yourself. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Um, and the price is high, right? God's son bought you. Uh, I was trying to think of a good illustration for it. The best thing I could come up with is, uh, like, let's say your dad has a super awesome car, like a, like a Shelby GT500 Mustang or something like that, right? And you know he worked super hard for it, he paid a high price for it, that's his baby. And let's say one day he gives you the keys and says, hey, take it for a spin. Um, you're gonna be super nervous, right? And let's say you go to put the key in the door and you like nick the paint a little bit and scratch it. You're gonna oh God, how am I gonna tell my dad this? And then, okay, maybe you get in the car, drive away. Let's say something worse happens, you're in a parking garage, you hit a yellow pole. There's a big yellow mark on the front fender of that Shelby GT500. And then uh, maybe on the way home, something works out as you flip the car. Like, what, 
your first, your first, your first thought is going to be, am I okay? Am I still alive? Your second thought is going to be like, I'm probably not going to be alive when I get home. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell my dad this. And and so, why why would you be afraid to tell your dad about the car? Because it's because it's super valuable to him, right? He's going to be angry because it is super valuable to him. <laughs> you guys are pretty good. Yeah, you are infinitely more valuable than a Shelby GT500, right? The price God paid for you is so much higher than a car that costs, I don't know, $65,000, something like that. Um, not only that, if you're a believer, you're a member of the body of Christ. You're not your own in that way either. We belong to each other, right? Uh, you, you even belong to your future spouse. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. So to uh, so we need to take this verse seriously. It says, flee from sexual sin. Run from it. Get away. But look at the verse again, if you can remember it. Do uh, I'll read it for you. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? A temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure you guys have heard that before, but really think about that. What is the Holy Spirit in Scripture but power? Elsewhere in this chapter, it says the Holy Spirit is the power of God that raised Christ from the dead. That's inside of you. That's the house that you're protecting, that sexual sin will mark. But... The thing that you're protecting, the person that's inside of you, is the very person that will help you overcome this sexual sin, right? Just think about that. Like, like yes, I'm working hard to protect this. I'm working hard to not mark this body. But inside of it, the thing I'm protecting is the thing that's going to help me overcome. So when you think about the fruit of the Spirit, self-control is one of them. If you're struggling with self-control, bring God into it, and He will give you that self-control, that promised self-control that's already inside of you through the Holy Spirit. Uh, love, if, you don't, if, you're, if you're coming to a decision that's going to harm you, and you're, the love for yourself, the love for the body of Christ, the love for your future spouse isn't winning right now, pray to God, bring God into that decision. And that love, that fruit of the Spirit, will help you overcome joy. Uh, the joy for a uh, future of you and your spouse uh, united in purity. Um, ask for that vision from God. So that, that fire, that power that's within you is the thing that will help you overcome. So as we go into small group, uh, I want to ask one question. That should be up there on the, stage, on the screen. It's really simple. If you just start asking yourself, is there anything in my life that might be controlling me, that I might be obsessed with? Uh, ask God to show you that. Think about it yourself. And let's go to a small group. I'll pray for us. God, thanks for